Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Just give me an indication that it's fine. Yes, can you hear you loud and clear? Thanks, Ms. Yeah, thanks, uh, yeah. Uh, So welcome to this uh, webinar on plant health in botanical gardens. So uh, just to briefly introduce myself, uh, I'm Masfun Gosa, a postdoctoral research fellow at the Forestry and Agricultural Biotechnology Institute at the University of Pretoria. Since the beginning of last year, uh, I was running this Sentinel plant project in botanical gardens in South Africa, which is focusing on monitoring and surveillance of uh, pests and pathogens across the country in botanical gardens. Uh, Trudy Papp, uh, whom you know, most of you know also, has joined us today. So you know Trudy has run this project uh, during the first term from 2016 to 2018. Currently, she's a research fellow at the Forestry and Agricultural Biotechnology Institute at the University of Pretoria. So before we start, uh, I have some housekeeping announcements. So uh, I will uh, give a presentation which will take me uh, 30 to 35 minutes. Then the floor will be open to uh, participants for question and answer and for discussion. Trudy will facilitate that session, and then we kindly ask you to keep your microphones muted during the presentation and during the question and the answer session. So uh, if you have questions, please type your question in the, during the presentation as well as during the answer and question session in the chat box. We'll attend to the, uh, the, uh, your questions later. But alternatively, you can also uh, raise your hands and unmute yourself and uh, ask questions. So uh, I'll uh, quickly share uh, my presentation now. Excuse me, just wait. Uh, I think you, you can see uh, the shared presentation now. It's looking good. Yeah. So as I already mentioned, uh, the title of today's presentation is Plant Health in Botanical Gardens. So I'll just quickly take you through the uh, outlines of the uh, presentation. I'll start with global burden of pests and pathogens on plant health and touch uh, some important points on impact of pests and pathogens uh, on food security, supply of goods and products, and as well as on plant biodiversity and ecosystem services. And then we'll also look into factors uh, exacerbating the pest and the pathogen threats globally and some knowledge gap on emerging uh, pests and the pathogen. And uh, it's also important to look into measures against pests and the pathogens and how those are linked to surveillance and the monitoring. Later on, I will uh, focus on the value of botanical gardens for uh, pest and the pathogen surveillance and give an update on the progress of some be funded uh, central project in the gardens. So to start with global burden of pests and pathogens uh, on plant health, uh, as we most of us know, pests and pathogens threaten plant health in different sectors. This includes natural environments, agricultural systems, uh, plantation forestry, urban areas, and the conservation sites, both ex situ and in situ. Uh, conservation sites, which includes botanic gardens also. As you can see in these uh, photos, uh, there are uh, really devastating pests and pathogens in different systems. This uh, uh, first photo shows uh, red bay laurel trees devastated by laurel wilt disease. And this one is on olive groves in Italy killed by Xylola fistiodesia, which is a very uh, serious uh, pathogen. And uh, this one shows the uh, southern pine beetle damage on pine plantations. As you can see, most of the uh, plants or the trees in the systems are killed. 
looking into the impact of uh, uh, pests and pathogens on food security and the supply of goods and uh, uh, products. Uh, this figure is taken from a recent uh, publication which did a survey on uh, major food uh, uh, crops, which includes wheat, rice, maize, potato, and soybean in different food security regions, which includes Northwest Europe, China, including our region, Sub-Saharan Africa. And it's uh, uh, really uh, surprising, you know, how these pests and pathogens uh, lead to huge yield loss, ranging from 8% yield loss to 40% yield loss in uh, maize and uh, rice. So uh, the, sadly, you know, these uh, uh, highest yield loss are recorded in uh, food deficit regions, such as uh, our region, Sub-Saharan Africa, which has also uh, uh, alarmingly increasing population. So uh, it's really, uh, uh, pests and the pathogens are really causing huge devastation in terms of uh, uh, food security also. So uh, this is not only the case in, uh, on major food uh, crops, uh, this happens in forestry and as well as uh, in the production of fruit and vegetables. Uh, looking into the impact on uh, plant biodiversity in the ecosystem services, uh, this figure is taken from Boyd et al. 2013, which is published, uh, was published in Science. And they uh, try to compare the status of forest system and the associated ecosystem services before the occurrence of pest and the disease and after occurrence of pest and the disease, and then after recovery. And as you can see in the figure, uh, the forest system is healthy and diverse before the occurrence of pests and the associated ecosystem services, which are indicated as A, B, C, and D here, are at high level. But after the occurrence of disease and the pest in the uh, forest ecosystem, some uh, important or dominant tree species have been uh, killed and lost, and most ecosystem services decline. But after recovery uh, or replacement of those lost uh, plant species with other uh, plant species, then some uh, service uh, where uh, ecosystem service were seen recovered and while others are uh, remain permanently harmed. So it's a huge impact on plant biodiversity and the associated ecosystem service that's uh, incurred by pests and pathogens. Uh, this has been shown for very important diseases uh, such as uh, chestnut blood uh, caused by uh, Cryphoronecteria parasitica on American chestnut trees and as well as Dutch elm disease or which has already eliminated uh, uh, elm trees in their native range. Uh, importantly, pests and the pathogens are also threatening plant, product, um, uh, plant collection in botanic gardens. Uh, we hear often here like uh, that bo uh, botanic gardens are really suffering from the loss of the important collection because of pests and pathogens. In a recent, a recent uh, botanic uh, garden uh, biosecurity uh, uh, webinar from Australia, uh, uh, Bray Summerall indicated that uh, they are losing some important collections, three collections in their uh, garden in Sydney. Uh, majorly uh, because of the uh, Phytophthora asparagi, which is an introduced pest species. And this is happening not only in Australia, but in most parts of the world. Uh, so uh, what are the factors that exacerbate pest and the pathogen trees? Uh, there are a number of factors, but I try to put some of the major ones. Uh, the first is globalization. With globalization, there is increase in trade and travel and the movement of plant materials which enhances the movement of pests and pathogens. And the other uh, important uh, factor is climate change, uh, which uh, is uh, taught to provide suitable environment for pests and pathogens and help with the range expansion of pests and pathogens. And it also causes extreme conditions such as drought, flooding and heat waves, which will stress plants and make them susceptible to pests and pathogens. Another point is habitat disturbance with the expansion of agricultural fields, plantations, mining, industrialization, and urbanization. Uh, there is a huge habitat dis disturbance happening, and this uh, leads to um, a high uh, population of pests and the pathogens. 
The other point is increase in human population, especially in urban areas. This would uh, lead to pollution and soil compaction again, which is stressing plants and making them susceptible to pest and the pathogen attack. Uh, of course, we know about uh, pesticide use. There is increased reliance on pesticides, which uh, ultimately lead to pesticide resistance and uh, reduce the uh, diversity and abundance of natural enemies, which actually checks the population of pests and pathogens naturally. Uh, so, uh, looking on knowledge gap on emerging uh, alien pests and pathogens, uh, unfortunately, many alien pests and pathogens are unknown to science, or some of them are unknown to cause serious damage uh, before they arrive in a new environment and cause uh, uh, damage. So, this is uh, really making uh, prevention, uh, detection, and the management of those type of pests and pathogens uh, difficult. Uh, uh, this is the case for uh, the causal agent of Dutch elm disease, uh, laurel wilt disease, uh, emerald ash borer, and polyphagus short pole borer, which is recently also detected in South Africa. Very little was known about these uh, devastating uh, pathogens and the pests in their native range. And it was only realized once they were introduced in the new environments that they were found uh, devastating. Uh, again, there is a knowledge gap on emerging uh, native pests, not only for uh, alien pests. Uh, always there is a potential for changing, change in status of native pests and pathogens. What is a uh, minor, currently might not stay minor in the future, it might change into major uh, pest, depending on, you know, uh, uh, influence from climate change, which may provide suitable environment for uh, the organisms. And the other uh, factor is uh, change in management region. Uh, mostly pests, native pests and pathogens, uh, they are uh, not really causing huge damage in natural environment, but in managed states, uh, they tend to cause uh, uh, more damage. Uh, uh, for example, if you see the Aloys now beetles in natural environments, they are not really um, a problem. But when they come to a managed states, such as in botanic gardens and home gardens, they tend to cause high uh, damage because uh, the environment gives them a uh, suitable environment as well as uh, the stress because of management uh, could also lead to that. So uh, surveillance and the monitoring is very essential to uh, identify these emerging uh, native pests and pathogens as well as uh, pests and pathogens that are alien to the environment to identify them because before they arrive in a new environment. Uh, to look into some of the uh, major measures against pest pathogens, uh, we, most of we, we know these uh, measures. Prevention of injury, early detection, eradication, containment and control or management interventions are very important. Of course, prevention of injury is the first and is the best method, which is uh, trying to keep pests and the pathogens from entering a certain region or country. And once uh, the pests and the pathogen pass that layer of uh, defense or uh, uh, protection, then the next uh, step is early detection, which is a very important step also, because the other uh, steps, eradication, containment, and control or management intervention, heavily depend on early detection of pests and the pathogens. So uh, all the above measures uh, depend on surveillance and the monitoring. So uh, uh, if surveillance and the monitoring is important, then what are the target location for the surveillance and the monitoring? The first important location is borders. Uh, this uh, often involves inspection of goods uh, which are arriving in the country at the borders and uh, checking them for signs and the symptoms of pests and the pathogens. This particular uh, surveillance is very important uh, in identifying pests that are moving around the world and their path of uh, movement, as well as uh, the frequency with which they move around the world. And uh, such type of surveillance also helps to improve uh, pre-border uh, phytosanitary measures, as well as import protocols. It also informs uh, post-border surveillance. The second uh, uh, important target location for surveillance is post-border areas. These are high-risk areas. You know such as uh, areas close to seaports, airports, warehouses, container and the pellet depots, 
and it might also include a botanical garden depending on their pro proximity to the uh, high risk sites. So such type of surveillance can be done uh, using traps, different type of traps, light traps, uh, uh, pheromone traps, uh, also uh, with the use of sentinel plants. I will explain later what sentinel plants are. The third important uh, location for uh, pest and pathogen surveillance are plantations, farms, natural forests and urban forests. Often uh, surveillance and the monitoring is done the, in these sites uh, to assess plant health and to check uh, for uh, or detect outbreaks of pests and pathogens. But the first two are really uh, focusing on prevention as well as early education. But the third category is just to assess plant health and to check for uh, outbreaks. Uh, different methods can be used, walks through and drive through or aerial uh, methods using helicopters, drones, or uh, remote uh, sensing technologies uh, can be used for this third category of uh, pest and pathogen surveillance. So uh, interestingly, recently there is a move toward the use of uh, sentinel sites for uh, surveillance of pests and pathogens. Uh, these uh, sentinel sites, uh, they serve to identify pest and pathogen risks, risks before they arrive in an environment. They are also used for early detection of pests and pathogens of uh, alien origin, but uh, they can be also used for identification of ex existing plant uh, health issues uh, within the environment. So uh, this uh, uses sentinel plants. Uh, these sentinel plants are plants very close to or in, uh, growing in close proximity to high risk sites, such as airports and uh, uh, seaports, and these uh, plants are uh, regularly inspected for pests and the pathogens. And the second category is the use of sentinel plantings, which sounds the same, but uh, sentinel plantings are different from sentinel plants because they are grown in the country of origin of the pests and pathogens, and they are uh, purposely uh, planted for this purpose. Uh, just to explain a little bit more on sentinel plantings, uh, if you see this uh, 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 illustration taken from Asian Metal 2019, the uh, uh, panel on the left-hand side uh, represents a exporting country, and on the right-hand side you see importing country. So sentinel plantings could be classified into initial, I mean, uh, impartial plantings and expartial plantings. The impartial plantings are uh, woody plants native to the exporting country, but uh, planted in nurseries and open fields, the one in uh, uh, light green color. Whereas expartial plantings are woody plants native to the exporting country, but grown in the uh, exporting country uh, or already growing in botanical garden, the one in uh, dark uh, green color. So, uh, Pests and the pathogens from forested areas can move to these uh, plantings and survey and the monitoring conducted in these impartial plantings and expartial plantings could serve as early warning system for the importing country. Whatever pest and the pathogen is detected on these plants could be uh, used as uh, information for the importing country. So uh, botanical gardens, uh, are very valuable for pest and pathogen surveillance. They provide very unique opportunity for that purpose. Uh, currently, there are over 3,000 botanical gardens widely distributed across the world. Most of them are in North America, Europe, Asia, and in Australia. But in Africa, we do have also some uh, botanical gardens. South Africa is uh, really privileged for having uh, a number of botanical gardens widely distributed across the country. So these uh, botanical gardens, uh, they house very diverse collection of native and exotic plant species, including critical and endangered, uh, uh, critically endangered species or species that are extinct in the wild. It is uh, estimated that botanic gardens uh, house over one third of the known plant species, which is huge amount of uh, diversity within the botanic gardens. And another important point is, as I already mentioned, the botanical gardens are located in high-risk areas, such as in urban areas, uh, closer to seaports, airports, 
and uh, they are also uh, sometimes close to natural ecosystems, such as important world heritage sites. If you take Christian Bush National Botanical Garden, it's very close to a very important world heritage site, the uh, Table Mountain uh, National Park. So moreover, you know, uh, uh, gardens, uh, uh, the routine uh, garden activities, uh, there are daily routine activities that are taken by, by, by botanical gardens, and this uh, could lead to biosecurity risks. If you consider this small circle as a botanical garden and the bigger circle an environment external to the botanical garden, a lot happens between these the two uh, environments which uh, could uh, enhance or help the movement of pests and the pathogens between the two environments into the garden as well as from the gardens to the external environment. Just to uh, uh, briefly mention some of these uh, botanical gardens, they do plant collection both locally and internationally for the, uh, their plant uh, conservation projects. Uh, and they also uh, bring in plant propagation materials and outsource organic materials such as mulch and wood chips. And visitors from uh, locally as well as from international, uh, from other countries, come to visit the gardens and stay in the gardens and they leave the gardens. And there is a chance for visitors to take, bring in pests and pathogens as well as carry them from the uh, botanic garden to the external environment. And, uh, the same is true with machineries, uh, botanical gardens rent machineries and equipments or contractors bring in these machineries and equipments and work as they finish their work, they take the machineries out and they use them in other places. The other important point is the disposal of uh, infested plants or plant parts. This is also one of the routine uh, activities of botanical gardens, which, uh, which uh, would uh, pose uh, pose a biosecurity risk to the environment and plant sale as well. So it is not only uh, pests and pathogens spreading from the botanic garden to the external environment, it is also pests and pathogens moving from uh, the external environment into botanic gardens. So uh, hence botanical gardens provide very unique opportunity for sentinel plant research and for biosecurity. Considering this uh, value of botanical gardens, a sub funded postdoc project was initiated in 2016 under the initiative of, uh, I mean, the framework of uh, IPSN. IPSN is International Plant Sentinel Network. It is uh, an initiative which uh, coordinates information exchange between botanic gardens. So this uh, project uh, in, on, in Sentinel uh, sites in botanical gardens and Arborita focuses on monitoring pests and pathogens uh, in the system. So currently we are in the second term, uh, but uh, the first term was run from uh, 2016 to 2018 by uh, Trudy Pap, and the current term uh, is run by myself. So the aim of the uh, project is uh, to improve surveillance and identification of emerging pest and pathogen risks. And this is done by using botanic gardens and ar arborita in the country as sentinel sites. Uh, the key tasks of the project include capacity building uh, in plant hills by interacting with botanic garden staff, assessing plant hills, uh, health in, uh, and providing a status reports on pests and pathogens, like uh, we used to do with the last couple of years in the botanic gardens, and uh, assisting with consolidating quarantine list of pests and pathogens. So before I uh, start discussing on the progress made during this second term, I would like to uh, give a brief summary of, uh, of the key outputs of this first term uh, of the project. Uh, as I already mentioned through during this uh, first term of the project and an important output of that uh, term was the detection of polyphagous shortfall borer and it is fungal symbiont in KwaZulu-Natal uh, National Botanical Garden. You all are aware of what does this, this mean for the country because uh, this uh, beetle uh, along with its uh, fungus is uh, widely spreading across the country and uh, causing devastation. 
And following this detection, uh, surveillance was carried in uh, different environments, in urban areas, natural forests, in some plantations such as the pecanut industry. And uh, it was confirmed that the uh, beetle and its fungus was, are widely distributed across the country in all provinces, basically, except in Limpopo. But we are not sure whether the pest is there also in Limpopo. It's a matter of surveillance and identifying it. Uh, a a polyphaga short hole borer research network was uh, also established following that uh, last year. So there are a lot of initiatives uh, now currently going on on, on the, uh, this pest. Uh, Trudy also identified several plant pathogens uh, from uh, botanic gardens. This includes Ganoderma species, five species, and Phycophthora uh, species. Uh, they identified eight species and two, I mean, three of them, these are uh, first records for the country, uh, the one highlighted in color. Uh, Armelera rot rot were also identified from uh, Christian Bosch National uh, Botanical Garden. And besides the pest and, I mean, pathogens, uh, through the uh, uh, identified scale insects or detected insect, scale insect on cycad and alloys such as uh, the Alocaspis uh, uh, cycad scale sect and Aspirotus capensis and the Diplochenius species, uh, which are really uh, the two, the last two are native species, but the first is uh, exotic species, which is treated in cycad. Uh, the last two, uh, the native ones are also uh, in uh, managed environments such as botanic gardens, they cause uh, problems. Uh, Trudy has uh, done a very fabulous uh, work in terms of capacity building within the gardens also. She organized a, a, a workshop in three botanical gardens in 2017, in KwaZulu Natal, Tristan Bosch, and uh, Pretoria National Botanical Gardens. I'm sure most of you attended, uh, participated in this uh, workshop. Uh, a number of uh, plant health topics were covered uh, in these workshops. Uh, such as importance of sentinel plants, alien invasive pests and the pathogens, and the importance of biosecurity, and uh, best uh, practices in garden maintenance, such as pruning and other practices also. And uh, insecticide application techniques were uh, some of the topics covered in those workshops. More than 120 delegates uh, attended the workshop, which is pretty much a nice workshop. So coming to the progress uh, made uh, during this uh, term from 29 to now, uh, this time, uh, we assessed plant health in 10 botanic gardens. Uh, mostly this is done in Sambi botanical gardens. Uh, whatever you see in the map, except Hantam and the Karo Desert, we haven't uh, assessed, we haven't been there, but the plan was for this year. But we have also uh, assessed uh, plant health in Durban Botanic Garden, Arden Gardens, and Pretoria uh, Zoological Garden. So uh, we followed a problem targeted and random uh, sampling uh, technique. By problem target, I mean uh, we asked the Botanic Garden staff to guide us to plant uh, plants or trees which have health issue. And we sample from those trees, and later on, we take time to also randomly sample uh, from the garden. Samples were identified using morphological and molecular uh, methods. So, uh, looking into some of the uh, major uh, insect uh, pests that has been identified from the garden during this uh, term, the first is uh, two cryptic aphid uh, species. Uh, what we call them Sinara cupressi and the Sinara tupiafilena, were identified from Christian Bosch National Botanical Garden. By cryptic, I mean uh, they look morphologically the same. Uh, it's very difficult to identify them based on their morphology, but we use a combination of morphological and molecular techniques to identify these uh, species. Uh, we found them on uh, Widringtonia nodiflora and Widringtonia uh, walichi uh, trees. Woodrigtonia walichi is a Woodrigtonia uh, sederbergensis. Previously, uh, it is known as sederbergensis, but now it's uh, changing into walichi. So um, the 
Sinara cuprasi was identified, uh, detected on uh, Nodiflora, whereas Tachovinella was uh, detected on Walichi. Uh, interestingly, uh, the uh, Udrugnonia Walichi is a critically endangered species, which is uh, currently only grown in Sedenberg Mountains. Uh, this uh, uh, effort, uh, uh, especially the Sinara cuprasi, was, uh, uh, it was invasive in East and Southern Africa in early 2000, and it has devastated uh, cupressus, juniperus, and the Woodringtonia trees in the region. And it was also uh, previously uh, detected in South Africa, and it was reported. Whereas Sinara to Jaffinilla is a new record, I mean, a first report for the country. <clears throat> so, uh, infestus trees were uh, uh, found uh, or seen uh, uh, showing a declining symptom, uh, a branch dieback, browning of the needles. Uh, looking into the control of this effort, particularly for Sinara cupressi, a biological control agent uh, known as Posia juniperorum was uh, introduced from Europe to Malawi in early 2000, and it was found. Uh, efficient and if there is a need for uh, management of uh, this pest in South Africa also, at least there is a, a biocontrol agent applied somewhere else. Uh, the other uh, report, I mean, uh, detection was a uh, first record of polyphagous short hole borer in the uh, uh, Sawani Metropolitan Municipality, particularly in the Pretoria National Zoological Garden. Uh, we uh, last year in uh, April we found an indication from Alex Neado from Pretoria National uh, Bot uh, Botanical Garden that uh, PSHP must, might be attacking uh, trees in the zoological garden. We went there and uh, did uh, surveillance and we identified both the beetle and its fungus bound from the uh, 10 tree species listed here. So we uh, advised uh, the garden to remove particularly the reproductive hosts and uh, properly dispose uh, them to uh, at least uh, minimize infestation, new infestations. The other uh, important pests uh, uh, detected in botanical gardens are two species of cycad steam borers, the Fasicorinus summeri and Fasicorinus variegatus. Uh, this, uh, both of these species are native to South Africa and Zimbabwe, and this uh, weevils they uh, bore deep into the stems of Encephalarotus and uh, uh, Cycad. And uh, interestingly, these uh, weevils they don't cause a big problem in natural environment, but it seems they only attack weakened plants only. But when it comes to gardens and the managed environments, uh, most transplanted plants and plants subject to other stress are vulnerable to these pests. Mostly uh, uh, plants infested with these uh, uh, pests, they uh, die in under garden situation. Looking into the control, uh, uh, it is important to class cycad, cycads in suitable in, uh, habitat and reduce the stress. But in case of uh, critically important collections, uh, insect sites could be considered as uh, pre presentative, uh, preventative methods. The other important uh, uh, pest detected in the gardens, uh, in, uh, particularly in Pretoria National Botanical Garden, is Aspidota scapensis. Uh, this is a scale insect, uh, which is really uh, smothering the lower uh, surface of the leaves of uh, cycads. And, uh, uh, this is only known from South Africa and very little is known about it. Uh, this uh, pest was uh, detected uh, by Trudy uh, in previous years from uh, Encephalaratus senticosus, but last year I also detected it on Encephalaratus altesiae. Both of these uh, Encephalaratus species are uh, listed as vulnerable species which are really facing a high risk of extinction in the world. So because of this, even though this uh, pest is native to the uh, region, it might endanger uh, cycad plants and uh, it needs attention. The other important pest identified is uh, the greater aloysna beetle, Brachycerus tyrocles. Uh, as you can see, this uh, 
uh, beetle is very huge and uh, it's native to Southern Africa. Uh, the adult feeds on the edge of uh, the leaves of uh, alloys, whereas the larvae feed inside the crown. And this uh, uh, damage causes uh, the rotting and uh, of both the uh, crown leaf as well as the stem above the uh, crown. Uh, so a uh, control is uh, mainly uh, with hand picking, both uh, hand picking of both the adults and the uh, larvae. But in order to hand pick the larvae, one has to remove the uh, rotting crown uh, because the larvae uh, is uh, feeding from inside. Uh, another important uh, method is uh, cultivation of alloys in suitable habitats just to reduce uh, stress on plants because mostly under managed uh, environment it is the stress which is uh, exposing plants to uh, such type of native uh, insect pests. Uh, there is also a, a laser alloy snout beetle, which was uh, uh, detected in Christenbosch and Harold Potter National uh, Botanical Gardens. And uh, similar to the uh, greater alloy snow beetle, this is uh, native to Southern Africa. Uh, as opposed to the greater alloy snow, uh, snout beetle, uh, the beetle, the adult, feeds on the surface, not on the edge of the uh, alloy leaves, but it feeds on the surface of the alloys, leaving these uh, uh, circular sunken scars. Uh, the larvae, like in the uh, greater alloy snow beetle, it feeds in the crown and uh, killing the crown leaves and making them to rot. The same control method like hand picking and planting alloys in suitable environments is uh, recommended. The other pest species identified is uh, the white alloy scale, uh, the Plachinopsis species. This was detected in Christenbosch and the Free State uh, National Botanical Gardens. Of course, this pest was detected uh, uh, in, during the first time, but uh, this time round we detected it in Christenbosch as well as in uh, the Free State uh, National Botanical Garden. Uh, this uh, uh, scale insect, it uh, really covers the, both surface, the lower and the upper surface of the leaves of alloys, and it smothers the plant and deprives the plant of sunlight. Uh, under natural conditions, uh, it's not a big problem, but uh, because uh, natural enemies such as wasps and uh, ladybird beetles control it, but uh, it can go out of hand under control environments in some cases. So uh, removal with a brush and spray with high pressure water is recommended. But if the uh, plant collection is really critically important, insect sites might be also considered. But that uh, has to be left as a last resort. Another interesting uh, insect pest from uh, uh, Durban Botanical Garden, which is very important insect pest. It is a native insect pest. It's known as African citrus psyllid, Triosa erythrinae. And uh, it was detected on Clausena anisata and Xanthoxylum davi uh, plants. As you can see, uh, uh, it is causing this curling and swelling uh, gold like uh, structures on the leaves, and it's causing uh, stunted growth. But importantly, this uh, uh, psyllid is uh, serving as a factor of an uh, African form of citrus greening disease, which they call it uh, Hwango Long Globi. And uh, this African uh, form of uh, citrus greening disease is caused by Liberibacter africanum. But there is also another uh, uh, form of uh, uh, this greening disease, which is caused another bacterium, which is known as Liberibacter asiaticus. Uh, the disease is caused by the bacterium, but uh, it is a psyllid which is transmitting the disease. Uh, the uh, Eritrina, uh, Triosa erythrina is this African uh, citrus psyllid. And experiment, under experimental condition, it is uh, shown that it is also transmitting the other form, the other bacterium, which is not yet in Africa, but it's a watch list of the citrus industry. But that bacterium, the Liberibacter of uh, Asiaticus, was also identified, uh, detected from uh, East Africa in Ethiopia and Eritrea. So uh, it is really important to understand the host species of this uh, psyllid, as well as uh, uh, search for uh, natural enemies of the uh, psyllid. 
So uh, another important uh, task during this term was capacity building within botanical gardens. Uh, we have tried to uh, build capacity building uh, in plant health in the different botanical gardens uh, through seminars, presentations. We did seminars like in, in Kristen Bosch National Botanical Garden, Free State. We had also an opportunity to present to a Sambi interpre interpretation officers meeting in Novel National Botanical Garden last year in October. And we also, uh, whenever we go to gardens for a uh, visit, we invite uh, horticulturalists, uh, interns, students to join us so that they can uh, learn from us as well as we learn from them. So it was a great opportunity and uh, really we appreciate for uh, your, the assistant of garden staff in that regard. So uh, just to take you through uh, our, some of our plans for 2020, which was very difficult to impl implement most of them. We plan to set up phosphide treatment for silver tree dieback uh, caused, as, caused by Phytophthora cinnamoma in Christenbosch National Botanical Garden. And uh, we also plan to assess plant hills in other gardens such as Toyando, Caro Desert and the Cholera National Botanical Gardens. And we were also planning to uh, identify the causal agent of white sting wood uh, Celts Africana is at Walter Susulu National Botanical Garden because uh, many trees are dying uh, because of unknown uh, cause. But uh, with, uh, uh, from our communication with Andrew, uh, he's suspecting a, a decamper drift might be the cause. So it would be interesting to identify the cause agent of uh, the disease of Celts Africana. But these three uh, plans, uh, we haven't yet uh, uh, implemented these ones because of uh, obvious reasons, because of the pandemic, but we'll hope to uh, maybe consider some of this during the upcoming spring season if the pandemic is subsiding. Uh, we also uh, have a plan uh, to create a web page for Sentinel Plant Project on Favi website. This is just to uh, give access to uh, users such as botanic, botanic garden staff of the resources uh, that were generated from the Sentinel plant projects such as articles, news, uh, list of identified pests and the pathogens and some photos, all those things. We are uh, building that one and it's at final stage and uh, we will let you know as, as we finalize that one. The other is uh, there was a plan of assisting uh, with the preparation of biosecurity best practice guideline for botanical gardens. This is actually the initiative for horticultural enrichment forum, but we are uh, assisting with that also. It's going uh, currently, so yeah. We are also, I'm writing reports as well as papers. Uh, so uh, there are some of the plans for the year. Uh, just for your interest, I have uh, tried to put some resources and the links uh, that are uh, linked to the project, like uh, journal articles on different aspects such as on fight of Tora diversity, and uh, this were from botanic gardens as well as uh, polyphagus short boron and its fungal symbiont, which was uh, uh, identified from the botanic garden, and this was written by Trudy. And there is another paper by Trudy, very interesting paper also uh, on uh, the use of um, in, uh, urban trees as sentinel uh, sites. And there is a paper on Ganoderma species also on the taxonomy and the species diversity. There are also interesting uh, views, uh, articles. Uh, two of them are on uh, published in con conversation. Probably you have read these ones. Uh, they are on polyphagus short hole borer. And there is a recent article on vital role of botanic garden in biosecurity, which was published in Wood and the Timber Times in Southern Africa. There is also a very valuable uh, web page uh, on polyphagus short wall borer, uh, providing uh, very relevant information. And uh, there is a research feature on, published on uh, Favi website, and there are news items uh, linked to the project. So uh, we uh, recommend you to read these ones if you have not done so far. 
So uh, finally, I would like to uh, thank uh, my team members, Prof. Mike Wingfield, Trudy Papp, Prof. Bernard Silipers, and Brett Hurley. Uh, we are working together. They are leading the project. I'm working under their guidance. And John Wilson also, who is, uh, who is a, a SAMBI contact person for uh, this project. And a very, very uh, huge thank you to staff of Botanical Gardens, all of you who have uh, helped in, and assisted us in so many ways in organizing field trips and in conducting surveys in the gardens. Your assistance is uh, hugely appreciated. Thank you very much. This is it from my side and uh, over to Trudy. Greetings all. Um, thank you, Mesman, for a lovely overview of plant health in botanical gardens and some of the work that you've been running in the last year and a half now. Um, so I'd like to invite you all, if you have any burning questions, any queries um, for Mesman to field, or if Nesman wants to handle them my way, please just raise your hand. Um, if you open up the participant list, there's a little icon in the bottom right that you can click on to raise your hand. Or if that fails you, um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and speak freely. Uh, I don't see any comments in the chat box, but I'll give you a moment to gather your thoughts. Alec, I see your hand raised. Or is that a hand from previous, previously? Right. I see. I see a gallery of black with white names and muted microphones. <laughs> Oh, Alec, I see you've unmuted yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to follow up on the Noresi. Uh, we had a request for somebody uh, from the industry. I think they're growing uh, avocado crops. And they was asking us for information instead of going to the NPPO. Um, uh, in DERF, plant health particularly. Because uh, we in botanical gardens, we don't have that kind of uh, information uh, up to pest uh, threats and all those kind of things. So I don't know if um, anybody from the industry, I don't think anybody from the industry is participating in this uh, webinar. So I was just wondering, uh, maybe Fabi can actually link up uh, with industry as well on the various uh, uh, you know, uh, crop plants that get exported or imported into the country to look at potential pathways uh, for those coming into the country. But I guess uh, plant health should have been uh, in the Department of health, uh, Plant Health, Agriculture, plant health should have been involved in. Um, but I've directed the person to contact them. I don't know if they contacted Fabi as well. Would you like me to speak to that Mesman or do you want sure, to totally, yeah. respond? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, thanks, Alec, for raising that point. Um, oof, we, I haven't received um, any inquiries from an industry person on that matter. Um, I think it does seem like botanical garden stuff, botanical gardens often receive a lot of inquiries from the public um, around horticultural issues and also pest and disease issues. I suppose I figure there's uh, a lot of expertise in the gardens and often people don't know the right place to, to go to ask questions or there doesn't seem somewhere to go. So botanical gardens are a good first port of call for many people. Um, but within FABI, we have a number of um, 
industry funded projects with a lot of stakeholder engagement with both the plantation forestry industry and then some agricultural crops including avocados um, and macadamias so there's fairly st strong stakeholder engagement there um, but but you're correct in that some of those inquiries should also go to the Department of Agriculture and say the National Plant Protection Organization. I don't know if that uh, answers your query. But, um, Lynette, I see you've unmuted yourself. Would you like me to? Yes, and your hands are raised. Go for it. Good to see you, Mason, again. Um, <laughs> great presentation. Um, I actually, maybe, I hope it's not a stupid question, but I got a, a query from, a, from, a, a, from somebody from the public the other day that wanted to know if they have, or they suspect that there might be a, a, a shot hole borer in, in one of the trees in their garden, who can they contact to come and inspect this or um, and I wasn't quite sure. They mentioned, um, I think it was three carers or something like that. But um, in the Pretoria area, do they have to contact you or is there other people or companies that could actually step in and do that job? Um, Miss Wendy. You are the right Thank person you. to answer this, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so in in the western cape there's cape town invasives that are looking after reports um, in the johannesburg area um, city parks have set up an email and a whatsapp to deal with inquiries um, so the yeah, I, this, these are listed on the FABI um, research feature for the shot hole borer. Where it's a new area, a new location, sorry, or a host tree species that's not currently on the list, FABI is happy to follow up. Um, so we can't handle absolutely every inquiry. Um, and generally, if it's an area where the beetle is already confirmed to be present, then um, the municipality is best fixed to be the contact person. Um, but yes, if it's a new location, we, we will follow up on that. Um, sorry, I, I've just realised there's a lot of comments in, in the chat box and you typed your comment in I missed that earlier so I see it's in the in the Pretoria area. Um, yes so we would uh, we would be willing to follow up with that. Um, there is a process underway to develop a national management strategy for the shot hole borer. Um, it's been a long time coming and hopefully once that's in place there will be, um, I guess, a support system for responding to inquiries from the public. Thanks, Trudy. Thank you very much. I know you might be flooded there with public <laughs> bothering you with all sorts, but yeah, that's that's typical one of the questions that I get. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it would be wonderful if there are a support system with specific people that we could refer them to. But I suppose that would be in future. Yes, yeah. So so far, the only well, like I said, the Western Cape municipality have set up the invasive species or through the invasive species um, forum or network. Sorry, they they've set up a, a a contact point for inquiries, and then Johannesburg City Parks have done the same for the municipality but that's yet to happen in Pretoria so we're, we're engaging with the municipality here because we also recently found a new infestation in Pretoria that we're following up on 
um, and need to give feedback to the municipality. Uh, I'm just seeing there's some more queries. Um, so Martin's asking about uh, citrus salad treatment. Um, do you have a response to that, Leslie? Uh, yeah, hi, Martin. Uh, that's a very important question, uh, but um, I'm not really sure about insecticide treatments for uh, this particular silid, uh, uh, but uh, we'll, uh, if there is a really uh, interest for that, we'll identify those ones. But uh, from my collection, what I have seen is uh, a really huge number of uh, wasps emerged from those uh, uh, leaves I collected. And uh, I'm trying to identify those ones. It's really interesting, not only for the botanic garden, also for the citrus industry. So uh, identifying those wasps would be very important. And the other thing is just uh, to, to, to uh, uh, keep uh, the plants from stress, you know, just uh, stress is uh, messing up everything and cleaning the garden and uh, keeping, uh, the, protecting the plants from stress. But the two uh, uh, species, the uh, uh, Clausena anisata and the Zytoxylum dabi are really known hosts of uh, the citrus seed. So, they might be really susceptible uh, species uh, standing in the garden, but yeah, uh, this lid is not only uh, attacking these this, this two species, but uh, it has uh, other hosts also. But I'll look uh, into uh, if there are uh, some uh, insecticide treatment for that, I will identify those ones. Thank you. Thanks, Mason, and I see Alec has also typed a comment in the chat box suggesting that Citrus Research International may also be able to assist with citrus pests. Thanks for that. Um, so we have a question from Pendulo to myself and Mesvin. Have we identified any research gaps for Sambi horticulturalists that we think they can venture on and which we can assist them as part of human capital? Nessa? Yeah, I think uh, there could be uh, many research uh, areas for the bot botanical gardens, uh, uh, but yeah, depending on the capacity there and the uh, other tasks, it might be very difficult. We haven't uh, yet listed uh, research activities for the botanic gardens, but I would think uh, research uh, or uh, any other work uh, related to uh, biosecurity would be very interesting in the botanic gardens because uh, that is a key uh, point currently, not only in South Africa, but throughout the world. That biosecurity issue is uh, really uh, very important. So uh, working on in biosecurity is very important in botanic gardens, and particularly with you know, uh, the initiatives that we already started with uh, developing uh, guideline, best practice guidelines, and implementing those ones and seeing the effects uh, after implementing the guidelines. Uh, that would be a very interesting area to uh, engage in. Thank you. Trudy, I think you can add on that. Thanks, Mason. I'm actually going to throw it back at Pendulo and ask you, um, from your side, are there, are there gaps that you see that um, horticulturalists need assistance with and, and perhaps um, through ourselves or links with BGCI, we could assist. Would you like to comment, Pendulo? You comment? See, Alec is saying that you preferred PSHB in the wood area. Okay, well, thank you, Paul, for adding the Cape Town Invasives website. Um, Would we be interested in the bycatch of PSHB traps? Um, <laughs> we have 
a PhD student who is looking at um, bark and ambrosia beetles in South Africa. Uh, she is nearing the end of her PhD, however. Um, and the answer is yes, we would be interested, but the problem is um, uh, finding a person to sort through uh, all the beetles. Um, have you approached Francois Roots about that? Paul, well, he's a little bit. He's closer to your neck of the woods. Okay, he's busy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. We're all too busy. Even if we aren't out in the field, we seem busier than ever. Um, let me get back to you on that, Paul, because it it's an opportunity that we shouldn't miss. But okay, so he's already currently looking through. Okay, if if we can find someone to potentially to pick through them all, then then yes, we would be happy to receive them. But I'll get back to you on that. Um, Okay, I see Pendulo is saying he can only comment in the chat. Fair enough. Um, right. I see you comment from Martin to Nesman regarding the citrus psyllid. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can send your way regarding that matter. I'm not sure if I've scrolled through this too fast, so if I've missed something, please feel free to put your hand up. Or yeah, I think those are the comments and the questions. Of course, Rosa. I'm also mindful of the fact that we're now over three o'clock, and we had said that we were going to three. Um, it's, I have to say, it's quite strange. I haven't um, facilitated a Q&A on a Zoom meeting before. And it's, so it's the first time I do that, but there's, there's also just a, a wall of black squares with muted microphones. So I don't know if people want to show their faces just um, for a moment so we can get a feel of who's in the room. Be nice to see, see you all. It's, it's tough not being able to get out in the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely to see you all and, and thank you so much for joining. I hope that there's been something worthwhile for you. Um, thank you for everything. Very informative. Thanks, Lynette. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Trudy. Thank you, Mason. Always a pleasure. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Likewise. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, shall I pass back to you, Mason, to, to wrap up? Yeah, uh, thank you uh, all for uh, joining for this web webinar. And we look forward to engage with you in the future also. Uh, please let us know also if you have uh, some interest areas that we can uh, you know, uh, arrange as a webinar if you have some uh, burning uh, topics that you'd like to know us. And um, we'll try to share this uh, slide with you. And, uh, you can uh, have a look into the slide as well as uh, some of the resources I shared uh, at the end of the slides. Thank you very much. And the other thing is, uh, I think during this lockdown, uh, it's very difficult to access the gardens and the, uh, the management issues would be very great in the gardens this time. Uh, so uh, pests and pathogens may take chance. So uh, I have uh, previously communicated with you via email uh, just to uh, watch out and look for pests and pathogens which might be emerging this time. And, uh, always please uh, feel free to uh, uh, let us know if you need your uh, our assistance and if you can also uh, think you know some of the samples are interesting and you can collect it.
send it to us uh, so that we can have a look. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Before you close, uh, you're welcome to come and do your sampling in our garden, you and Trudy. Yeah, definitely. That's a very important point. At least we can uh, visit the gardens which are close by. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. We'll communicate with you. We'll okay. do some assessments. Uh, yeah, Sonia. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Trudy. Thanks, Paul. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Rudy and Pendulo, are you out or can I quickly just chat to you, uh, Pendulo? Are you still on? Hi, Pendulo.